Hey everybody, in this month's Hero Arts Kit video, I am having fun with the images from my childhood. I love this kit so much. It has so many magical and also sort of 70s images that I just can't get over how much fun it is. But I am going to teach you a technique, I promise. So I have used just the coordinating dies from the mushrooms in the main kit. These are beautiful mushrooms in the stamp image, but the shape is recognizable enough even without the stamp that I decided just to use the coordinating dies for this technique. So this is a way to make your watercolor sparkle with a translucent finish. So you can do all kinds of detailed watercoloring like I'm doing here and then still get a really sparkly, shiny finish that's really easy and actually pretty neat, as in not messy. So I will be painting these all with Daniel Smith watercolor. Just doing wet on wet techniques to get a little blend with the darker red and omitting the little white spots just that I'm hand drawing and omitting for the little classic mushroom look. So to do this you first want to paint the mushroom except for the white spots with just clean water. And then that makes it easy to blend the reds on the mushroom cap around the little spots because the watercolor will stop where it hits that dry paper where you've omitted little circles for the spots. So I am using two of the pyrroles, which the guy at Daniel Smith, I think he says pyrrol, but I can't make myself do that. So even if it's right, you're just going to have to forgive me because to me it looks like pure old, like Pyrrhic victory and that type of thing. So I just, I'm just not used to saying PY as pie, so I can't. Anyway, all watercolor, including Daniel Smith, will dry a little bit lighter than it is when it's wet. So you'll want to be pretty bold with your color. I'm moving on to the third mushroom just with the water and trying not to put the spots in the same place every time but that's actually really hard to do. So I end up with some pretty similar looking mushrooms. Now you can see that the first one that I painted is actually almost dry and you can see the difference in the intensity of color between that one and the one on the right which is still wet. So that kind of tells you how much you need to overshoot in terms of your colors if you like them bright, which I do. So I'm trying to add as much color as possible to these little caps and some quick shading with that darker red. Now I will try to mix a good mushroomy brown in my palette. And because in my Lydia split over here, which is my curated Daniel Smith split from my split group, I don't really have a sort of mushroomy brown. So I'm taking a more yellow brown and shadow violet, and I will mix these two until I get a neutral brown that really looks mushroomy to me and a mushroomy brown is a good neutral brown. And I will paint the stems with these. So first I'll put a light wash of that mushroomy color on there and then I will add a little deeper darker of the color that I've mixed around the edges for a little bit of shading. I will be adding shading to these afterwards. I'm just trying to give this sort of that rounded feel that those stems would have. I'll repeat the same thing on the second one. When you're mixing up your paint like this, you'll want to make sure that you have enough paint in your palette. This is a mistake that I always make. So I'm mixing some new over here on the left 
just trying to get that same color. It's hard to get the same color exactly just because it's kind of more of an art than a science. So you'll want to mix up a lot more color than you think you need if you're going to be painting multiple images with a custom mixed watercolor. So you can already see the first one was a little bit cooler than these two. Now I'm going back with pure shadow violet just under the cap of the mushrooms to give a sense of dimension and a good dark shadow there. I will also wait until that dries and I'll add pure shadow violet in a little bit of a harsher line where the cap meets the stem of the mushroom. Now I spend a lot of time with mushrooms because I love to eat mushrooms and so I feel like I know what they look like <laughs> and what that shading under the little cap looks like. I do love cooking with mushrooms and I have some ways to cook mushrooms that even people who object to mushrooms like so don't be afraid to experiment with these. So I will heat dry these real quickly before I add the pure shadow violet that's really going to give me a deep dark and a little bit of crisper definition under the cap. And I try not to do the same thing on every one. You do want it to be very dry when you're doing this because you want that crisp line. So I am drying those off camera and adding that harsher line and you can see what a difference it makes on that one on the right. And I try to add, you can do it here and there, don't do a continuous line that tends to look a little bit too cartoony. If you do a little bit, skip a space, do a little bit, then you'll have a more realistic looking shadow. Now comes the fun part. So I use the exact same dies to cut some double-sided adhesive and in this case the double-sided adhesive really matters. Now normally I use an artist tack product which I love but that product which is great for intricate die cuts has little dots and for this application you do not want little dots. You need this adhesive has a perfectly smooth and super strong hold so it's one sheet of adhesive going down on top of the image and that's what you really need for this technique because you need every bit of this watercolor paper to be covered. And watercolor paper is a little bit harder to cover than cardstock and so I find that this particular adhesive does the best job. So now I will peel off and expose the adhesive and you'll see how shiny that is on all three of these. So now I basically have a sticky watercolored mushroom that I love that you can just die cut this and it exactly matches. It's so perfect. And then I will take my favorite really clear but also glittery embossing powder, which is the sparkle embossing powder. And I will coat these mushrooms with it and put them down on the little grid pad that I have. I will stick a piece of masking tape to the back with the sticky side up and then tape that sticky piece of tape down onto the mat and that will keep it in place while I am heat embossing. So I'll come up with a little tape rig for the second one, make sure the extra powder is off, and just stick that down. This is great masking tape because it sticks, but it will not tear your paper. And with soft cotton watercolor paper, that's important. So now I'll recapture my extra embossing powder. I just love this embossing powder. I love that it's so clear. It's not just like covered up with glitter. You can still see all of the details of my watercoloring, but you have this sparkly, and shiny, so shiny from the embossing powder, sparkly from the little bit of clear glitter that's in there. And it's just, it's magical. It's a magical forest of magical sparkly mushrooms, and I love it. So in the background, I have some of the images from the kit as well as some text. This is another release this month, which is just fantastic. And then this third card just cracks me up with the <laughs> somewhat dark sentiment. Miss You Grandma from Little Red Riding Hood's Outcome. 
So head over to my blog for more information and a giveaway. And thanks so much for watching.